Okay. Um, so, ready for reality. That's basically what, uh, what we are trying to be um, in all our car projects because the time to market when it comes to the automotive industry is uh, really important. Uh, what you see here is just a, a mock-up between actually, it's not a photo of the uh, factory, it's a 3D scan, a colored 3D scan. Uh, which is technology that we use for all our factories to quality ensure the installations. And then we just have some CAD models. Um, first of all, a little bit of information about the Volvo Car Group, as we are called now, since we were bought by the Chinese company Geely. So we were previously owned by Ford from 99 until 2010. 2010, Ford decided to sell us because we were not a profitable company. Now we are, <laughs> so they're lost, right? Um, of course, we have our manufacturing plants in Europe, in Gothenburg, where they had offices. We also have one in, uh, in Ghent, Belgium, in China, which is our second home market, you would say. Uh, we have uh, two manufacturing plants, one in Chengdu, one in Daiching. We have a motor, uh, plant in uh, Changyaku and then in Shanghai we have a small R&D office and also the basically the, the headquarter for the China operation. Um, uh, a nine billion dollar investment program started when Geely bought us. Uh, the new XC90 is the first result out of that. In addition to that we I needed to mention it because we are here in the States. Uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, we are now building up our first manufacturing plant in the US. Uh, $500 million investment approximately here. Generating about 4,000 jobs, I think, in the Charleston area in the long run when it's up and running. Uh, also in here in California, we have a design studio. So basically, that's the, that's the Volvo Car Group world. Um, so a little bit about our journey forward. Um, we want to make, of course, like, like any uh, car company, we want to make more models. We want to make them tighter, rapid follower, shorter life length of the vehicle. Um, we want to be global. We want to have manufacturing plants in all our, in, in all sides of the globe. And we also have our our motto designed around you, meaning that the cars and the, the uh, type of functions that we put into the car are supposed to be helping the driver as much as possible, meaning that we want to introduce new technology more often. Um, so how are we going to do that when we are such a small company? And in order to give you just a view about how small we are, so these are, I think, um, the numbers are from last year. So a little bit over 80 million vehicles are produced yearly in the world. We produce not even half a million. This year, maybe half a million. And that would mean, that, that would be a, a sales record if that's the case. Uh, so we're really small. Um, the only way to do this is to be fast then. Uh, we have a shortened lead time project. Today it takes about 40 months to develop a car. We want to lower that to 30, um, which is not an easy task. Our plants need to be flexible. We need to be able to produce several cars in each factory using the same equipment. We need to be able to produce the same car on, on several places. We need to be able to shift cars between different parts of the world in order to, to meet the customer demands. Uh, we also want to reduce our physical prototypes. Uh, that's an important goal because a physical prototype in an early phase is very expensive because you're relying on material which are perhaps handmade, laser cut in a small scale. A car body, when it comes to prototype, is perhaps, what's that in US dollars, about... 150,000, just a car body, without any equipment in it, without chairs, wheels, whatever. 
when you produce a car, uh, normally in, in mass production, it's about 900, 9,000. So it's a bit, bit of a difference. Um, in order to achieve this, we have, we have said that we need to be able to take decisions only on virtual data when we are designing a new car, when it comes to the process um, to be able to, to manufacture it. In, in order to, to be able to take these decisions only on virtual data, we need to trust what we see on the screen. That's important. Um, meaning that the models that we use, here you see a well gun, or actually two well guns, and the car body, they need to be high detail because if the person looking at it doesn't believe that it's real, it doesn't work. So it needs to be able to, to trust that it's real equipment that he sees on the screen, right? Um, the data that we have around the car, whether it's uh, joining data for weld points, if it's uh, reference points, if it's a glue string, an arc weld, whatever, whatever we have data in order to, to produce the car needs to be of a high quality. Uh, also, our simulation models uh, needs to be complete. So we need to be able to simulate all signals, all behavior models for all the equipment, and able to, uh, to prepare this uh, virtually. So our, our current capabilities, when we look at the detailed models and the PLM data, here we believe that we are quite good. Um, when we look at our simulation models, okay, we do a lot of work here. We have about... Again, we are a small company, but still. So we have about 30 plus engineers within the process simulation area for the body shop. Ma mainly simulating robots, welding, handling, pick and place operations, and so on. Uh, we have a lot of standards and specifications, both for simulation, robotic programming and installation, and also the PLC. Uh, and with a lot of standards, I really mean a lot of standards. Uh, Swedes are perhaps only second to the Germans when it comes to standardizing and, and writing specification about how things are supposed to be done. Um, we also have our own programming tool um, for offline programming of the robots. Uh, so basically what this means is that regardless of the robot OEM or the robot brand that we are installing, the program will look exactly the same or roughly exactly the same. So whether it's an ABV robot or a Komao or a KUKA, the program code is, it's a Volvo robot code, basically. Um, so this is, um, this has been in place for like 15, 20 years in order to, uh, to make life easy for the maintenance guys. So when any of you that have seen a, a KUKA native program knows that it's not so easy to read. It can be, I mean, a simple operation will on a printout generate a lot of pages. Um, so basically what we, what we feel today, or what we felt today was that we are good at simulating. Mm -hmm. Was there another one? Let's try this one instead. We're good at simulating this. The robots and how they move and how we weld inside of a fixture, for example. Unfortunately, uh, the station is a little bit more complex. So this, being able to simulate this only gives us a small part of, of the reality, right? Because you have a lot of sensors, you have safety doors, you have a lot of stuff that would influence your cycle time when it comes to if, if a sensor breaks, for example, what, what kind of effect will that have on the cycle time and so on. Um, so we need to be able to, to cover everything. Um, what we then started to look at was the virtual commissioning uh, technology. This really means that we take what we already have today, simulation models, all our specifications and everything, and then we connect that uh, with a real control system, meaning the PLT. And then we, of course, want to, to run our simulation together with the PLC in real time with the real code to be able to debug also the PLC code when we, when we, uh, when we simulate. 
that means that we will have a fully verified process without any physical installations. So meaning that the commissioning time when it comes to installing will of course decrease. Um, so in our development logic, this will have the following basic uh, standardized uh, look. So we have a program start, then we have some kind of a completion phase of a core phase where we typically decide robot brands, we decide where to produce it in which plant. Uh, we know what kind of a vehicle it is, if it's a sedan or a wagon or an SUV or a, or a cabriolet or whatever. Then we have a, a development phase here where we'll develop uh, the process and the product simultaneously. So basically here we have a, a first, first shot of the product and then it's developed until FDJ, which is basically engineering pencils down. Everything should be finished. And I say it should be finished. We, we always have some something left, right? But So here we develop our process and a product. Then we send the data to suppliers. Could be Coca Systems, could be whatever. Valiant, I think, is a big, big company here in the US. Uh, a line builder that will then do the offline programming, do the PLC work, installation, and commissioning. Um, the commissioning phase here is mainly waste. Nothing good comes out of that. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't find any smart solutions on the commissioning phase. I mean, here we are fighting fires to get everything started at the date for the job one. So basically, we want to eliminate the commissioning time as much as possible because it's not, it's not value added to the, to the project. Uh, what we then want to do is to to invest more hours in in this phase here to develop the process and the product and the PLC code already before we send the data to the suppliers. Uh, and then do the virtual commissioning here to test everything to make sure it's it works. I mean, we have the process finished. We know that we can produce the amount of cars that we need. We know that the PLC code can handle all error messages from robots or whatever. Um, and then, of course, we want to reduce the time spent on the shop floor, installing equipment, people running around, uh, electrical and whatever. So that's the, uh, that's the idea. Uh, because you know, I mean, you know, you're familiar with this one, I guess. Uh, I mean, the later, the later in the project you come, the more it will cost to change something. So, of course, we want to make this, this phase here as short as possible because this costs a lot of money. And it really, it's, it's waste, as I say. If you, if you look at it, what it adds to the, to the final product, it's just waste. Everything should be decided here and then just installed. Um, in order to do this, we, we, uh, made a short implementation to implement the, uh, the, work, the virtual commissioning stuff. So we started with, in late, or in, in early 2013, we decided to investigate it. We decided to run a pilot together with Siemens, uh, together with Siemens R&D in, in Israel, which is actually handling all the manufacturing simulation stuff. Um, so we decided to scope for a pilot. We had a couple of workshops with Siemens we had a report out, which I will share with you a little bit later. And then we started to work on the working methods. Sadly, for all the technology interested people, uh, the actual technology to run virtual commissioning, to connect your simulation to a PLC, it's not that hard. We were, we were hoping it would be more. I mean, if you're interested, to, interested in technology, you want, to, you want to play around with the technology. You want, you don't want to mess around with working methods or organizational setups or whatever. That's, it's more fun to play around with the hardware. Uh, but anyway, and then early, early this year, we made a decision to include virtual commissioning for the first time in the core projects. Um, a little bit about the pilot uh, and what we found out. So we, we started with a small, simple station within brackets because it's simple for us perhaps not simple for, for everyone, but still. 
Uh, so we had a few conveyors feeding in material to a robot, picking it up, applying glue here, loading into a fixture, of course closing down the fixture, then we have a welding robot. So basically this was the scope to see if we could create a PLC program out from our standards, a PLC program that will work in the factory. Um, because that was that was one of the things, I mean, we don't want to make any adaptions, uh, either in the robot programs or in the PLC code in order to run this, because then it's then it's not worth anything. So we need to we need to be able to to run exactly the same code for the robot for the PLC as we would in the factory. Um, Technology-wise, ABB IRC5 robots, one spot servo and one handling glue robot. We had a Siemens CPU, 319F, for those who are interested. Uh, we used uh, Siemens Process Simulate for, this is what you see here basically, for uh, the 3D simulation software and the offline programming. Uh, and then we used the TIA portal for the PLC program and also overview. Uh, and then a Semotic Net OPC server, so we run everything uh, through OPC. So basically we can connect the, uh, we basically had, the setup was two, two laptops. Actually this one with uh, the simulation software connected via TP cable to, to the PLC. And then since the Siemens CPU has two TP inputs, the second one was connected to another laptop running TIA portal. So we can monitor what happens in the PLC. And we found out that we didn't need to adapt anything. It's a very powerful debug tool. It's an easy and fast setup. Once you have the OPC server running, everything is, is really smooth. Um, we also mentioned something that we need to have commonality between our plants. Today, that's not the case everywhere. I mean, we have a PLC standard, but we have a, an adaption for every, for every country and every plant, basically. So some of the things are commoner, but then you need, then you have some, some uh, specific things. Uh, but in order to auto-generate or to support auto-generation of any code or anything, you need to have a, commonal, uh, a commonality between the plants. Um, we need to co-locate people in order to create the understanding in between them. We need to have the robotics and the PLC guys sitting together when we do this. Otherwise, uh, they, will, they will speak just. Um, and also the cooperation between Volvo cars and the line builders. Okay, how should the responsibility split look like when we introduce something like this? If we are supposed to to do this ourselves, that means that we need to take more responsibility on what we actually deliver to the line builder. Today we basically deliver a car body, CAD models for a car body. We have some, some basic process setups that we think could work. We make some investigations, we check weld guns and so on, but then it's up to them to design the rest, the detailed design for fixtures or whatever. Um, so this responsibility split, of course, needs to be uh, looked over. Um, we also uh, took part in a research project called uh, Vertcom for virtual commissioning. It's uh, there are some some companies beside us. Das all systems are there as well. Siemens, KUKA, Schneider, Scania, and Volvo Trucks. Volvo Cars, of course. Nevs, which is formerly Saab. I don't know if you recognize that car company as well. And then GQN Aerospace which makes uh, airplane engines. So basically here you see the same picture as, as in our development logic. What we want to do is want to reduce the, the commissioning time to save this time here. And within the project we have uh, a number of work packages. Uh, we have one work package for the virtual preparation and optimized logic, including the restart. Uh, that's a big problem that we see, especially when we have a station with glue, for example. Hey, we're gluing the windshield, and then we come halfway, and then we have some interruption causing everything to stop. Then you have a half glue windscreen, okay, how to get everything back. 
to where where we start again. How do we do that? Robots are, are stopped in certain certain areas, blocking, so you can't just press home on the robot and expect it to run home because you have stuff in the way. Um, also, the glue applied on on the windshield on only. How long has it, been, has it been there? Can it be used, or do we need to shave it off, or yeah, stuff like that? Uh, we have one package uh, focusing on how to automatically generate the PLC code out from a process, basically a process description. Uh, virtual commissioning, including the logic, basically that's what we did in our pilot. So that's we have a few more, few more of that coming there. We are building some physical demonstrators, both at the Sharmas University and at Volvo. And then what we do now in the current activities for the new car project, so a little bit like like uh, Sammy talked about the other day with the irrigation project. I mean, we will have a mass a mass problem if we introduce this for for all stations everywhere. Because in the development logic, I mean, the questions that we get to our PLC people, those questions will come earlier in the project if we introduce PLC code earlier, and we will get it much earlier, and then we already have another project running because the projects are overlapping each other in the factory implementation, meaning that they are still answering questions on the old product at the same time as the new questions start coming in, and we don't have manpower in order to to uh, to cope with that. So basically, we, we said, okay, we introduced two stations for two model interruptions. Um, we said to the line builders that okay, you can use you need to use process simulate, but you can use either the OPC or the Simba. Simba box is basically a hardware that will simulate a Profinet, uh, Profibus network. Meaning that okay, with the OPC you can simulate the PLC, one CPU, so you don't have the safety PLC included. The Simba box will will emulate the entire. Uh, Profinet, Profibus network. So you can attach any hardware. You can attach a physical HMI panel. You can attach a physical emergency stop button. You can attach anything. Anything that you would install in, in reality. Uh, we also said that we need to have reviews during the project in order to track their progress. Um, we also need the, the virtual commissioning to be presented before uh, they start the installation activities in order to see that they've done everything correctly. Uh, safety is actually not a demand to to including the PLC in the first projects. Uh, there were some there were some pros and cons with this of course you need to make some adaptions in the PLC program in order to to block the safety part. Uh, but uh, on the other hand the safety part in the PLC program is highly uh, it's basically a template that we use for all our stations. So it's not, it's not a lot of effort for them to, to, uh, to do it later. Um, we have a bit of a modified handover to the supplier on these stations. So basically, we have an event-based event simulation instead of a Gantt chart simulation in order to, to help them a little bit. Uh, the event-based simulation is really the base for the virtual commissioning in a way. It's just a matter of whether the logic is processed by the external PLC or an internal logic engine within the, the software. The equipment should have a behavior model instead of just simple kinematics with open and close. Uh, so we need to, and also we need to think about and prepare for the virtual commissioning uh, to be able to have reusable logic because the virtual commissioning is dealing with the real PLC, so every signal in the station must be present. Otherwise, uh, the PLC program will not work, of course. So the PLC, if it needs an input on anything, it needs to be there. It could be forced, of course, if the normal condition is that it's always true or always false, false but still the signal needs to be there. Um, and also we need to measure the success rate, of course, when we introduce this. Uh, so. Uh, the overall commissioning time of the station is, of course, important to measure. Uh, the process-related errors during the installation phase should also be possible to measure that. 
Uh, we also want to see, of course, if we miss something in the virtual commissioning that we need to to specify that they need to do uh, the next time. And also the preparation in the early phases. Should we at Volvo do more or should we do less? Depends on, okay, how much information do they need when, when we hand over the data to them. Uh, so now we're trying to do a little bit more than we usually do, and then we'll see, okay, is that was it useful or do we do you basically just need the CAD models and then you can do everything. So that's something that we will we will uh, investigate also. Um, so other activities that we're currently looking at is basically the input generation for the virtual commissioning. So we have a question here, how much can we auto-generate? So basically the input to the virtual commissioning and the PLC, a lot, a lot from that comes from uh, from ePlan, from the electrical drawings, schematics, I.O. lists, stuff like that. Um, so basically what we want to do here is that we, we build our process in uh, Process Designer from, from Siemens. So basically we have CAD models for all equipment, we drag it in. Uh, these CAD models should have uh, attributes that we can push into to ePlan using XML code saying, okay, what kind of a drive does this conveyor have? Is, if it's a robot, how many IOs does it have? Uh, stuff like that. In order for Airplan to, to automatically generate the schematics, IO lists, everything needed for both the PLC side and for uh, the simulation in order to then be able to, to run them uh, against each other to debug. Questions? Crystal clear. Yeah, thank you for a nice presentation. My question is how flexible is your, uh, this uh, commissioning? In other words, let's suppose that you want to make a change in your design. Can you adapt this fairly quickly? Yeah. If we want to make a change, for example, in in the design of the car, meaning that, okay, this will then generate some kind of a process change or we need to move a robot or we need to whatever. What, what about change in uh, infrastructure? Let's say you want to use a different PLC or a different network. Yeah. For, for PLCs, uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, now we have a standard at Volvo that we only use Siemens PLCs, but... But nevertheless, I mean, the, the actual technology can be used with Siemens, Ellen Bradley, ABB, Mitsubishi, whatever. So that's just, as long as the PLC can communicate via OPC, you're good to go. And all of them can, so okay. it's, yeah. uh, that's easy. And apart, um, also when we, when we do the simulation, we use the same model from the early get-go to when we are at the actual virtual commissioning phase running against the PLC. It's the same model all the time. We just refine it in steps. So as long as we have a stable product and we can go in and, and do the detailed design for fixtures, for grippers, for racks, for the, for the entire layout. Um, if we want to move a well spot, okay, move it and then do the investigation, adapter over program, run it again. That's the... That's the nice thing, thing we, with, uh, with doing it virtually because also with the reduced prototypes, if we want to reduce the prototype, meaning that we won't have any prototypes until basically the last test series before mass production, that means that we need to be able to verify that the install equipment works much earlier because we don't have any parts being able to put into the fixture seeing that all sensors work or whatever. Uh, so doing it virtually means that we can do this a lot cheaper, of course, because, I mean, if something goes wrong, when we run it, I mean, if you have, as, as I mentioned earlier, if you have prototype material and you do a test series, for example, for a line, a respot line, and then you have some, you have five complete car bodies, prototype material, about a, a million US dollars or something standing there, and then you run it in the second station, something goes wrong, meaning that you have to scrap one of them. Too bad. 
And also it's fairly, it's fairly common to have, okay, when we run a, a pre-series, it's mixed. So you have the current running products and then you have the new prototype products on the same line running. So be, to be able to, to set it up once takes a lot of planning to see, okay, when do we have a window to, to be able to run this, this series in this line? If something then goes wrong and we need to stop the line, then the current products are delayed. And to, to come then to, to production directly after it and say, okay, when can we do it again? They will just say, F off, we need to run production, right? Yeah, you mentioned that you had two projects that uh, you did with Siemens yep. last year. Uh, Siemens is a very large company. What division is that? Was that from Karlsruhe? It's the, uh, basically the manufacturing business group they are called, but it's Siemens uh, PLM Software. Yeah. So PLM Software is the, the group within Siemens that handles uh, these kind yeah, of things. Yeah, because I have many colleagues in Germany doing a little bit similar work, so I was wondering yeah. if, uh, if it's related. Yeah. yeah. But the PLC is from uh, Karlsruhe, actually, in mm. energy automation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very nice presentation, thank you. I had a, I had a question. Uh, with regard to this virtual reality environment, uh, you do the PLC sequencing, and also you do the robot trajectory planning as well? Yep. Okay, and how much adaptation would be needed at the commissioning stage or at, at the implementation? For, for the actual robot motion? Yeah. Uh, not a lot at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can predict the robot motion using, I mean, we run it with, with the RCS robot controller software. So it's basically an ABB controller. The same, the same controller in the real robot is used also in the simulation okay. uh, given to us by ABB. So what, for instance, so if when you do this robotic welding, I'm yeah. assuming that the uh, like below centimeter, like accuracy would be needed there. Yeah. So in terms of your CAD models and the uh, base of the robot, all this information would be very precisely available yes. at the simulation yeah. level. So everything, everything is basically measured. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't know. We should go back to. Um, so everything is measured. I mean, the the conveyors are measured using a Leica laser. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is positioned in factory coordinates. So we have a factory zero. Yeah. Then everything is positioned. Uh, that position is then, so we have a, a base position for the robot. In relation to the robot, we have a base position for the car in the fixture. The work object for the robot so is So the basically. trajectories are planned at the simulation stage yes. and they are just executed at the commissioning yeah. stage. And so of course, I mean, we, we might be able to, we always have some, some discrepancies between the reality and, yeah. and the virtual world, of course. Yeah. We could have some, the floor is not completely flat or right. whatever. Uh, but, but we have an installation accuracy for the robots in, I mean, it's in millimeters. Okay. Thank in deviation you. in XYZ, so. And the, the motion is also 99% accurate yeah. uh, in the model compared to, okay. to the real robot. Yeah. Thank you. No further questions?